Welcome everybody to this Lightboard session where we're going to learn a little bit more about vSAN. In this particular session, we're going to learn about how vSAN can uh, power uh, persistent volumes uh, for uh, Kubernetes workloads. So if you've worked in a traditional environment where you were spinning up virtual machines and you worked with developers, if we go back you know, a long time ago, uh, they would open a ticket to create a virtual machine. And it was okay, and the VMware admin was pretty busy. And then we started looking at, okay, let's automate creating some virtual machines. Let's layer on vRealize Automation or, or VMware Cloud Director. I mean, that was great. You know, they could self-serve some VMs. When we moved to containers and Kubernetes, the speed at which the CI, uh, CT and CICD, um, continuous integration and testing, deployment, this, the, you know, needing to churn hundreds or thousands of this, um, these volumes, this is something that you have to have automation. Um, it's just fundamentally, you can't manually scale these types of workflows. And so this is where this common interface, the, uh, the container storage interface, which we have a drivers from the vSphere side that connect to, allow the automation of storage creation. Now there are three di different classes of container storage um, interface that can be created. You can have block volumes. This will commonly in the Kubernetes land be called uh, read write once. And so you only have one container that's accessing that block volume. It's not a clustered disk necessarily. Um, and then we will have the file volumes. Um, and these are read write many uh, is what you'll see this often mapped in the storage class. Now we have our storage policies which we know and love for vSAN as well as virtual volumes, but you also have storage uh, policies and classes that exist within Kubernetes. And what this CSI does is allow them to map together so that you can call an SPBM policy from within the YAML configuration as you stand up your containers. So when you say, I want this policy with this RAID level, this level of performance, or these data service characteristics, uh, I wanna land on a cluster that's encrypted maybe for compliance reasons, the CSI is going to talk to the, you know, within the vCenter, it's going to talk to vSAN and make sure that the data store it lands on can substantiate that. As well as on the file shares, they also have SPVM policies and it will map that. Yeah, the, the goal here for the uh, container storage interface is really to help orchestrate the activities that are being requested by those containers and the YAML files that are associated with them and the backing storage system. So just as John mentioned, that's how we tie in this notion of if there is a need for a persistent volume, that will be uh, pro uh, programmatically provided for by this storage class, which is going to be communicating via storage policy to where the data should live and how, uh, how resilient the data should be. So it's really removing uh, the need for the underlying storage system uh, uh, to be manually intervened in, in any sort of way uh, to figure out, should these volumes be uh, protected uh, in a way and, and then we will end up uh, manually you know, making it, it more resilient. This is, means that it's all taken care of through the use of storage policies and storage classes. Operationally, this may sound kind of scary to a traditional admin of having mm -hmm. hundreds or thousands of these things being automatically created. How do I talk to a developer who says they're having a problem and find out which one's which, particularly when there's an, a bit of an obfuscation layer created by the container? Well, the good news is, is the, the actual container volume IDs are passed through to the vCenter interface. And so within the container volume structure, you can actually go look at that and metadata tags. People will commonly tag what application that is or whether this is test or dev and things like that can actually be visible end to end. So you can actually have, you can even have tags that are associated on the file share volume. So you can say, okay, this is tied to my Prometheus application stack. So if you'd like to learn more about uh, running persistent volumes uh, for uh, Kubernetes and uh, container workloads within a vSAN environment, feel free to jump out to uh, core.vmware.com. Uh, you can learn all the things that you want to uh, know about this and other aspects of vSAN. Uh, thank you very much.